Welcome to Newton's Apple. Newton's Apple is made possible by a grant from DuPont, makers of better things for better living. And also by this station and other public television stations. And now your host, science correspondent, David Hyde. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to Newton's Apple, the program that answers your questions about science, technology, and the world around us. Our first question comes from Douglas Wendt of Benicia, California. He writes, I'm interested in music synthesizers and would like to know how they produce melodic sounds and simulations of different voices. Well, Douglas, we've asked some musicians to stop by and give us an idea of what the synthesizer can really do. That was fantastic, guys. Thanks. And yes, that was totally synthesized music. It's come a long way since the early 60s when electronic synthesizers were first developed. Those instruments created and controlled electrical frequencies through the use of things like generators, oscillators, filters, and amplifiers, and helped people turn electronic tones into actual music. With computer and digital technology, synthesizers are much more versatile today and can make electronic music sound like it was created by acoustic instruments. So to bring us up to date with this technology, we've invited David Mash, chairman of the Music Synthesis Department at the Berklee College of Music in Boston. Wonderful piano playing, David. Thank you. What does this have to do with music synthesizers? Well, this is a player piano. Let me turn it on for a minute. I gotta be able to play this one. You know, in many ways, this is a predecessor of today's music synthesis sequencing technology. We were listening to a pre-recorded performance stored mm -hmm. on paper tape. Today, it's possible to store our performances on magnetic disc. So in a sense, the player piano is like a low-tech music synthesizer. Sure, in many ways it is. So when did this music synthesizer technology really get started? This all began back in the early 60s with the early Moog synthesizer, which we have a picture oh, of right there. Oh, there's the beast right there. Yeah. Look at that. This was created by Bob Moog. And I've brought along a, a film that we can take a look at that shows the machine in action, and Bob Moog as well. Let's take a look at it. Right from the very beginning, Bob Moog was looking for a new way to create sounds and a new way to control those sounds. And the instrument that he created does that electronically. Here with a keyboard in this case. Sure. Or drums. All electronically, just changing pitch and tone. and Exactly. Now, you've brought along some instruments like the band was playing? Yes, this is a keyboard synthesizer that's a distant relative to the old Moog synthesizer that we saw earlier. The difference here is that it makes it sound electronically, but with the latest digital circuitry. So all the wires and all the dials and stuff are just crunched down into computer chips at this all point. All into one little chip, yep. That's really amazing. Now, you play the clarinet, don't you? Well, I am no Benny Goodman, let me tell you. So <laughs> if we, let's do a little experiment. We'll have you play a note on the clarinet, and then I'll play the same note on the synthesizer, and we'll take a look at what those notes look like on the oscilloscope. It has been a long time since I had a clarinet in my mouth, so here goes. Oh, that's okay. Let's... And a lovely sound it is. <laughs> that's about all I can do, though. <laughs> okay, and here's the synthesized version. Real clean tone there. Let's see what they look like on the oscilloscope. This is going to give us a picture of the waveforms that of these both instruments... sounds, individually. Mm -hmm. The one on the top here is yours, okay. and the one on the bottom is the synthesizer Now, why version. does my uh, line have so many extra bumps? Okay, all this extra interest in the sound there is from the spit and the air that you're putting through the clarinet. I like the term extra interest a little better than sure. that. But that's natural sound, though. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what a, a natural clarinetist is going to sound to a little bit, uh, sure. a little more practice, perhaps. But, you know, even though it looks a lot different up here, it still sounds quite a bit the same. So maybe if you play a few notes, I'll play a few notes, and we can listen to them. Okay, here goes. Try this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember so that prove one. It. <laughs> right. 
Now, where do where do we go with this uh, actual sound? Though? I mean, we want to have it sound like a real instrument. Are there machines today that can put in those little nuances? By using a technique called digital sampling, we can capture all the nuance, all the parts of the sound that the original clarinet produced. Did you bring one of those with you? But of course. Oh, Let's go right. take a look. So this is one of those machines, huh? This is the Kurzweil 250, and uh, what they've done is they've taken a real clarinet, and they've measured the amplitude changes of the waveform, like in that picture, stored them as numbers, and when you play the key, it plays the numbers back and we hear the sound. So let me try, I can't keep my fingers off of this. So there's the clarinet sound again. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And there are many sounds stored in this instrument right now. We have this one, for instance. Okay, old grand piano. And we have this one. You can actually get a choir sound in this. Anything that you can hear with your ears, you can put in this. Stand-up bass. Sounds great. And uh, even this. Classical guitar. Yeah. How many instruments are in here? Uh, there's so someplace around 350 in this machine right oh, now. There are multiple hundreds of instruments inside here. Now, the voices. Let's go back to the choir thing. How do you get a voice or any sound into this machine, actually? Well, why don't we demonstrate that by putting your voice into the machine, and we'll use that microphone that you're wearing on your sweater there. I don't have to sing, do I? No, why don't That's you just... probably worse than my clarinet playing. <laughs> why don't you just say something profound? Uh, like Newton's apple. Sure. And in fact, why don't you say it again, and I'll sample it. Okay. Newton's apple. Okay, and if you play that key right there, you'll it's have in it. in here? Newton's apple. Listen to that. So it's on all these keys, huh? Sure. Got a chipmunk version there. Newton's oh, apple. Real slow. And you can, you can take advantage of that and uh, make interesting music from that. Newton's apple. Contemporary sound sure. here. Huh? You can play chords. Newton's apple. Oh, lots of voices. That's phenomenal. Now, I suppose when you can get that kind of stuff into it, which is basically a computerized synthesizer here, you could compose from this. Sure. In fact, why don't we do that? We can make a piece of music. We can store your performance on the magnetic disc, just like we spoke about well, earlier. Perpetuity, huh? Yeah, and we can, you know, make it like it was a player piano. All right, let's try it. Okay. So what would you like to start with? Uh, we'll start with the piano. Okay. Um, we'll try something real simple here uh, from grade school days. Uh, give me okay. a beat. I'll give you four beats, and we'll start. Okay. Way back. Okay. That's real good. Um, help me out with a drum beat. What would be a good drum beat here? Oh, how about something like that, maybe? Okay, I got it. Okay, Ready? here's four beats for you. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> this is amazing. Okay, let's go back to the bass sound. We gotta have a bass in this too. Okay, ready? Um, okay, ready. Here we go. Four more beats. It's all stored inside the machine right now. That's it. It's going to do something good with it, I hope. Huh? Sure. In fact, we can even look at it as music notation. We can get a printout of it. Sure. Look at that sheet music right off of the computer then. Mm -hmm. So that's my very own composition. Sure. And we can play it back just like we played the piano earlier. And uh, we can play along with it. Okay, let's do that. Okay, uh, why don't you punch up number seven? We'll okay. get the clarinet back. Oh, I've got a solo on my clarinet now here, too. Okay, and I'll start this up and come over and play. Oh, good. I think I need your help here. Listen to that. This is great. David, thanks so much for bringing all this in today. Roll over, Beethoven. We'll be right back.